Hello and welcome to this tutorial on creating the invisible effect in Adobe After Effects using masks. So here's our end result. The actor walks on screen, goes invisible and then walks off. And that's it. So first of all, we're in Adobe After Effects. I've imported footage into a new composition and the footage is coming straight off the EOS 7D. I'm just dragging that down to our timeline. What I'm going to first do is just find the first frame where our actor walks on and use that as our clean plate. So there we go. Now it's going to crop that right on down to that point and that will be our background clean plate now. So I'm going to rename this file. Clean plate. I'm now going to bring the same file down again this time I'm going to put it above the clean plate and I'm just going to again move the clean plate over to where roughly I'll be needing it. Right, I want the invisible effect to start just as she pulls her hood up. So at this point I'm going to go onto the edit menu and I'm going to split the layer so that I'm only going to do any masking on the bit of the video that I actually want. So edit, split layer. There we go, now it's two sections. So this is where I'll start doing the masking. I'm just going to rename these files. So the first one I'm just going to rename as walk in. So that's the bit I don't need anymore. I'm going to rename this one as the invisible effect. So this will be the controller. I'm just going to duplicate that layer and put it at the bottom. I'm just going to rename it as temp. Uh, so it's a temporary file that I want to be coming back to later on. But it's not really important to the actual invisible effect itself. Okay, so at this point I'm going to start using the pen tool just to start masking around our actor. I'm not being that neat because it's okay as long as I'm just over generous with where the mask is. So just masking right round. Oops, the mouse kind of jumped there. I'm going to press undo and continue. I'm just giving myself enough points to make sure that if I need to, I'll be able to make it uh, nice and flexible as I go along. Okay, and I just click on the last first point to end it, and there's our mask. So now what I'm going to do is just go down and I'm just going to make. I'm just going to turn off the layers that I don't need to use for the moment, so I'm just making those invisible. There we go, there's our mask to make sure it is working. I'm just going to click on add and turn that to none. So right now the mask is having no effect. I'm now going to make sure I press the clock so that it keyframes our animation. I'm just going to fast forward a few frames. Now use the arrow tool. So I can now start moving these points so I can move our, key, our mask around a little bit. I'm now going to speed this up a little bit so you don't have to watch it in real time. This is now as I mask our actor out. I'm just changing the mask to red because I just find it a bit easier to see on the green and yellow background. Okay, it's not as easy as doing a green screen, but it does give us full control of what's happening. So again, I just fast forward a few frames and then move it along again. going back a few frames to make sure that it is actually keyframing properly and interpolating between them. Now in real time this whole sequence took about 10 minutes so it's not really that long. Uh, 
Uh, if you're not sure, you just shift click the points to select more than one point at a time. I'm now starting to shrink the mask a little bit so it looks like the effect is starting to phase out a little bit like she's going completely invisible so no longer the predator effect but completely gone now watching the end result I don't actually like this technique and I won't do this again I'll actually make the mask shrink completely rather than just going vertical So I've nearly finished masking this this little bit out. In a moment I'll move the mask right off the screen so it no longer has any effect at all. There we go, mask's gone. I'm now going to subtract the mask. There we go. Actually I've told Fib it should be an add a mask. I'm just going to wind it back a little bit and there's our mask taking place. Just have a quick check, make sure everything's okay. Oh, it's not okay there, so I'm just going to pull this mask out a little bit just to make sure our hands are covered. And it's not particularly neat around the edge, but it'll be okay. Yeah, that's fine. Right, so back on to some. I'm not sure I've gone to subtract. Just checking the mask again, making sure everything's okay. I'm now clicking pre-compose and I'm moving all the attributes and that way this is what will make the invisible effect actually works. Now that's all that effect is now a separate layer. There we go. I can now bring the clean plate back and the walking back. There we go, so we're now actually working on separate layers. I'm selecting the clean plate, going over to our effects menu Doing a quick search for displacement map. There we go, and we'll drag the displacement map onto our clean plate. There we go. Then we'll drop the menu down into our effects, displacement map. Let's pull it up a little bit. And I'm going to select our invisible comp one. So that's what we just pre-composed. Now our map horizontal displacement is coming from luminance, as is our vertical displacement. And then change centre map to stretch map. Now we're where we can play a little bit. We're going to increase the horizontal displacement. Again, search down to your taste, just fiddle with these numbers until you're happy with the result. But warning, it does stretch the edge of the page a little bit. So now that's kind of our little ripply predator effect. So that really is the effect done. A quick look what that looks like. There we go, there we go. So it's straight into the invisible effect. Now I'm not totally happy with it just becoming 100% invisible straight away, and this is where the temp layer comes in. So we go, I'm going to drag temp up, up to above the walking, slide my pointer back a little bit. Right, so this is the point where I actually want the invisible effect to slowly fade in rather than be instant, maybe just over three or four frames. So I'm just shrinking that down to the point where I want my little uh, fade in to actually stop working. Zoom in a little bit so I can see where I'm working. Just the beginning of that, that layer. And again, as before, I'm going to use the pen tool to start drawing a mask around. So this time I'm just going to do a mask just around the hood area. So this is the first bit that will go invisible. I'm 
My mouse is just kind of glitching a little bit. Okay, so that's where the first frame is going to be, just simply making the hood go invisible. Again, I'm just turning the uh, effect to none for the moment. Don't want transform. Go towards the mask and animate the keyframes again, clicking the time with the, the clock. So fast forward to where I want it to be at the end. Use the little arrow tool again, selection tool, to drag this mask around. Oops, not clicking. Oh, press undo. as before I'm just very quickly moving these points to almost have full coverage but not quite so by this point nearly our acts will be almost completely invisible but not quite Sometimes you have to fiddle with the points just so you're happy with, with where they are. Okay, I'm just going back a few frames, see how that's interpolated. Okay, so now I've changed that to subtract. And I'm just going to play about with our feathering. The feather just makes a slightly nice softer edge. There we go, so that's looking okay. Just change the photo a bit more. Again, this is just down to your personal style. Although that looks a bit flat, so I'm just going to go back in and just change those key points a little bit. Just make it look a bit rounder. I could have been more clever. I'd make it around the arms and the t shirt first, and then the cloak, or. Maybe that looks a little bit better. And that's pretty much our effect done. Next time I'll be doing using the roto brush instead, which is a little bit quicker.